Hey, Anthony, uh, just curious, since you've been able to, to get in the playbook a little bit and talk to Coach Faulkner, just what have they kind of told you about the role that they see you having on the team whenever you guys are able to, to get back all together? Um, I mean, we really just getting started, um, you know, with day one being yesterday. So um, it's hard to hard to really you know, tell you guys um, you know, what my expect, expectations are. But um, for speaking, you know, for me personally, you know, I feel like um, we're going to have to be able to know everything, come in and know everything, um, special teams, um, side of the ball, like, you know, on offense side of the ball, catching out the backfield. Um, that's just how I'm approaching it. And that's just how any football player should approach it. Um, I just have to learn it all. So um, I haven't been really talking about um, expectations for me. Um, not so much, but um, for me personally, I have expectations for me. And, you know, that's all. That, that all has to do with you know, hard work, you know, getting in the playbook, studying, you know, what I'm doing. Thanks. Brian Backo, Post-Gazette. Morning, Anthony. Thanks for jumping on here with us. Um, I know uh, there was a, a clip last year of you talking a little bit about Devin Bush's uh, trash-talking abilities when you faced each other. And, and when you got drafted by the Steelers, he kind of tweeted you right away that the pass is the pass. Is there anything more to that little story there or anything you can kind of tell us just uh, that you might remember from some of those meetings with him head-on in the B-gap? Um, yeah, um, I've been, you know, watching him play for a long time, even before I stepped on the field. Um, he, he been, he's been dominating. He was a guy that dominated college football as soon as he um, stepped on campus. So always been a fan of his game when I actually got to play him against Michigan um, my very short sure freshman year. And I just remember him just flying around, um, just talking to me the whole game. Um, I remember the, the play that he tackled me on. He said that I, I, I couldn't mess with him. And then we just we started laughing and I started laughing and went back to the huddle. And, you know, I, I feel like he's a, he's a good person because after the game, you know, he came up to me, man, and he was just saying how, how much he respected my game and he told me to keep working hard. And um, that meant a lot to me coming from a guy like that, you know, watch him play, um, the nastiness he got in his game. And, um, you know, he played that position how it's supposed to be played in college and uh, in the NFL. So, um, I'm excited to be um, this teammate. Definitely excited, you know, Matt, <laughs> you're going against him. So you didn't give anything back to him then? Say it again? So you didn't give any words back to him then? You just kind of took it and moved on? Yeah, I just kind of took it and moved on, man. It was, it was, some, it was I guess it was kind of like my welcome to college, um, you know. So, yeah, I just, just took it and moved on, man, but I um, don't I, that's a that's a part of the game, like the trash talking and stuff. Like it never it never gets to me. Like like I said, when he said that, we both just started laughing. Like, that's what football is all about, you know. So, Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. Jeff Hawthorne, ninety three seven, the fan. Hey, Anthony. Uh, Reggie Bush has come out and compared you to a Le'Veon Bell. I wondered if you had heard those type of comparisons and what you think about wearing twenty six with the Steelers. Um, yeah, I definitely heard, um, I seen what, what Reggie Bush said, um, definitely means a lot coming to him, but, um, uh, at the end of the day, I haven't, uh, played a down in the NFL yet, so, um, like, none of that really means, um, too much to me, because I had to go out there, and I had to get it done, and, um, just me wearing two six, um, you know, I, I always been a, a big fan of Le'Veon Bell, like, he's, a, he's always been the best running back in the league to me um, ever since I've been watching him when I was in um, college and when I was in high school. Like, he's just always been a um, top back in the league and one of my favorites. So, um, you know, I was just thinking, just thinking about numbers. I was just, you know, really just, um, you know, I wanted to get 25, but I know Twan wanted that number. So um, I just really wanted to get 26. It, I didn't want people to think it was anything like, oh, I want to, be better than Le'Veon. Like uh, that's not that's not the type of person I am. Like if anything, it would be um, you know I look up to him. I idolize Le'Veon Bell. Um, you know I watch his game. I study his film. And that's somebody who's been a great back in the league for a long time. So um, that definitely a big props to him. It wasn't nothing like no disrespect or anything. Thank you.
Yeah, yeah. Anthony, um, how much uh, training are you able to do? Are you able to lift weights? And um, how much do you think you can uh, fit? How do you think you can help this running game? Um, I mean, they're definitely able to work out. I, mean, I work out every day um, right at the uh, rookie mini camp. And so um, I get up. You know, get my work in on the field, um, on the hill, just always just getting great cardio. And, you know, my whole thing is just, um, and um, like the coaches are telling me, man, you just, you got to come in in the best shape of your life. Um, and that's for all the players, not just me. So that's all the only thing I'm focusing on, just getting out there on grass and cleats and, um, you know, just running it and just getting in shape, getting ready to play um, football, and, uh, as well as lifting too, but more so just uh, running. Dale Lawley, DK Pittsburgh Sports. Uh, Anthony, there seems to be a, a, a prevailing notion that that you are a smaller back. I keep getting that question from from uh, Steelers fans. Uh, is it? Be, do you think that's because you're of your speed? I mean, you're 208 pounds. At least that's what you were at the combine. Um, that's the same size as a lot of the other backs uh, were drafted in your in your area. Um, do you, is there a little bit of a chip on your shoulder because of that? I mean, people kind of look at you as a back. Um, not really. Um, I know I'm not the only small back that has played in the NFL. People want to look at me like that. So um, ultimately, it really doesn't. Um, it really doesn't matter to me. Um, I didn't see uh, all types of size of running backs playing the lead and uh, you know get it done. So uh, ultimately, it's just about um, you know how bad you want it. Um, you know, running the ball. It doesn't matter about the size. It matters so the heart that you have. So, you know, me being little, I, I really don't know, you know, take that to heart too much. Mike Prezuda, DVE. How you doing, uh, Anthony? I wonder if you could give me a scouting report on your teammate, Antoine Brooks, if he was playing for the little Rutgers and you were getting ready to play him. What would, uh, oh. would jump out at you? Um, first of all, he can play anywhere on the field. Um, literally, he can play anywhere on the field. I mean, oh, he's always on the ball. He's always on the ball. He has a knack for just being around the ball, um, catching picks, just making plays. Like he loves to be around the football. If you click up, if you pull up the film on defense, you're going to see 25 stand out. Um, every single time, every single play that he's worth. He's relentless. Like it, it, his scouting report has to be the best. Because like every time this guy steps on the field, it's just he's relentless, and you can tell um, anybody who sees him play football. Like no matter who it is, you can tell um, when he steps on the field, he really loves football. He loves the game. So um, I feel like I feel like Tuan's gonna gonna be a great player. Because like I said, he just he really loves football. And then one thing about defense, um, you gotta get to the football, and I feel like that's what a lot of people like about him. Like, he's always minding football. Will Graves, Associated Press. Hey, Anthony, I'm just curious, you know, for, for the rookies here, it's such a weird off season. Is there a fear and anxiety that you guys will be, quote, behind guys that have been in the league just because you don't get to prepare the same way that they got to prepare? Um, no, I wouldn't really see it as behind because ultimately everybody's in the same uh, boat right now, you know, really can't do too much. Everybody's going virtual. FaceTimes and everything, so um, I wouldn't really see it as behind. Um, you know, it's all up to you if you're going to be behind. At the end of the day, we're getting the installs and, um, you know, being in the in the field, they won't expect you to still come in and into camp and still know the plays, expect you to um, know where you're lining up. So um, at the end of the day, it's like um, you really can't fall behind. So I don't look at it like that because I feel like everybody's in the same boat right now across the league. So, um, and, you know, as far as just the, it's just the team, it's just all about, you know, learning, just getting in the playbook every day, not a, not just in meetings, but, you know, at the meetings. And just uh, just working on your prior when it comes to the playbook. Real, real quick, Angela, if I could, a real quick follow-up. When you say that, when you're doing football stuff outside, are you going outside and, like, actually lining up and, and simulating that part of the, the gig? Um, yes. Um, uh, ultimately, a couple 
these past couple of days, well, these past couple of weeks, actually, um, I've just been going out by myself and just um, just going over and just, just studying a couple of plays, like installs, uh, like the first um, install, and then, you know, just just going over, just going over little stuff like that, um, just doing what I can. Each time I, um, I'll get a new install or, or get a new uh, a play, and I'll, you know, go outside by myself and, you know, just try to run and execute and get reps. Appreciate it. Mr. Sadansky, Trib. Hey, Anthony. Um, first off, just the special teams, uh, um, how much is that going to be important? You, you mentioned it early on there. You know, most rookies, no matter what, are going to have to play special teams. Are you willing to embrace that? Do you like that? Did you do a lot of that before? And, and how much is that important for all you guys in the rookie class? I feel like it's important. Um, not even just for the rookie class, special teams is important in football period. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's important for the game. So um just speaking on just me uh, being a rookie coming in, um, you know, I don't really have a choice. So um, it's something if you love football, you wanna find anywhere to get in the field and play. So um I'm looking forward to that. And like I said, anywhere I'm able to um be reliable on special teams. Um, uh, I'm going to do it. So, like I said, at the end of the day, it's football. So, and real quick, are you? You seem like you're close with Antoine. I mean, you like Derwin Gray is here too. There seems to be a lot of Maryland guys. Last week, Indian Prince was with the Steelers. It seems like a lot of Maryland guys getting up with the Steelers. Yep, yeah, but um, a lot of Maryland guys, man. Um, you know, definitely was happy to you know get drafted. You know, deep, uh, Derwin called me, and you know, we just um congratulating me. He's been uh, like a mentor to me in college, somebody that I always went to uh, for questions and just balls. So, so I'm happy that I get to do that again at the, at the professional level. Thank you. Jacob Klinger, Penn Live. These are the last two. Hi, um, Matt Canada is new to the Steelers as well. And I was wondering if you could give, you know, teammates and other people uh, an idea of what to expect from him as a coach and, and the ideas he might bring to an offense? Um, my candidate um, is one hell of a coach. Um, actually, one of my favorite coaches I really ever had. Um, left, a, left a big, big, big impact on me um, when he left Maryland. Um, just um, he showed you know, how he cared, not just for us on the field, but he showed how he cared for us and for me. Um, just talking about me specifically. Um, off the field, you know, um, always checking up on me, um, making sure I'm doing the right things, telling me I'm um, right from wrong, even on the field, um, coaching me up, coaching me up hard. Um, and, then, you know, I like that because when a coach coaches you are, which Matt Canada does, man, it means that he wants to get you better. And, and it's about the way he coaches, you know. Um, he, he just wants you to get better. Uh, I feel like he's a um, hell of a coach. I feel like guys in the room are going to gravitate towards him, his attitude towards the game, and, um, the way he speaks is just always is 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 positive. He always makes you think positive, and that's what I love about Matt Canada. I'm super excited to, uh, just to be around him and pick his brain. So that, that guy knows a lot. Last question is for Mark Kabali. The Athletic. Hey Anthony, uh, just to follow up on that, do you think Matt Canada had a, any uh, sort of input in? Uh, getting you to the Steelers and trying to get into Mike Tomlin, Kevin Colbert's head to draft you? Um, I really can't say because I wasn't in the, in the room. So um, I don't know what what um went on to take place to, to really draft me. Um, I'm just I'm just happy to be a Steeler, man. I know it's a great organization. has a lot, a lot, a lot of great history. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited to be a part of it. I feel like I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be.